Let your directors be directors, let your managers be managers, and let your leaders be leaders. And always be there to help develop the culture in your office. But all of this happens with a plan. You can't just do this accidentally. You've got to develop this strategy for hierarchy. Hello there, entrepreneurs. It's me, Dr. Glenn Krieger, with another episode of Your 5-Minute Friday. And I want to talk about something today related to our work and how much effort we have to put in. Now, if you're like me, you like things done right. Now, I don't believe in giving a lot of grace when it comes to getting the job done. I give a lot of grace when it comes to the person and anything going on in their personal life I try to help with. But I don't give grace in terms of this is the measured outcome. This is what I need you to get. I don't change my finish line for anybody if I don't have to. And so how do you get things done without it eating you up inside, without it destroying you? Well, there's been some great lectures, particularly Ben Fishbein and Amanda Floyd when they did their amazing Orthopreneurs University course, which you can go check out at orthopreneurs.com. Amazing course. And one of the things that they really have done quite well, which is a lesson to all of us, is to be able to set up an organizational hierarchy that allows us the opportunity to step away as doctors. Now, when I spoke to Amanda Floyd and we had a long talk about what the goals are of the organization, it was crystal clear that they want the doctors, imagine this folks, to just be doctors. Isn't that crazy? To go and do ortho, to uh, chat with kids, to hug moms, to just have a great time and not have to worry about who's doing what and what checklist has been turned in and all those other things that go along with it. And so the question I have to ask you is what are you doing to create the organizational hierarchy that you need? Now, if you're new in ortho, this is a great opportunity. If you have one or two or three people working for you, it's very, very easy to start figuring out who does what. And I'll talk more in another podcast episode about strengths and evaluating how to put the right people in the right chairs. But for right now, your goal is to start developing a hierarchy. And what that means is you need somebody who's going to be in charge of the whole operation. Now, <laughs> if there's only you and one employee, guess who's in charge of the whole organization? You got it. You are. Okay, so last year, we had over 500 orthodontists at Orthopreneur's Summit. And everyone to a person said it was the best orthodontic meeting they'd ever been to. Now, if you're not signed up, it's going to sell out. So please go to opsummit2022.com right now. Sign up. I promise this will be the best ortho meeting you've ever been to in your life. Or you let me know and I will pay to send you back to the airport in a limousine and pay for your return flight. No questions asked. I've offered that a ton. Nobody's ever taken me up on it. You know why? Because it's going to be the best ortho meeting you've ever been to. OPSummit2022.com. Hope to see you there. But once you start developing more people on board, you can start putting one person, quote unquote, as a manager or a director, and the others can work with them and they answer to them. Everybody's got to answer to somebody. Now, as you get bigger, I've seen many offices with great organizational hierarchies you should create a chart, and there's a great website that's free, last time I checked, called lucidchart, L-U-C-I-D, chart.com, where you can make diagrams. You should make an organizational hierarchy of what your office should look like now in terms of operations. Who's in charge of what? And try to figure out where you'll be a year from now and develop that organizational hierarchy so you can hire for the right person. Because let's just say right now, You've got, I don't know, four employees. Let's call it five, because that's a more common number. You've got five team members. You've got three assistants and two up front. You've got a TC, someone answering phones, checking patients in, handling the schedule. Okay, now you're going to go to six or seven. Where are they going to go? When are you going to decide you're ready for them? And how are they going to work? What's their job description? Who's going to oversee who? Now, at some point, you're going to need a quote-unquote office manager. And at some point, if you get big enough, you're going to need to separate an admin manager from a clinical manager because it's too much for one person. And at some point, if you have multiple offices, you're going to start needing to create directors, people who actually make the policies and systems and disseminate them to the managers who then oversee the leaders who oversee everybody else. The nice thing about this is you're out of the picture, but you've got to train them. You got to make sure they understand what they're doing. But as time goes on, let go of some of the micromanagement. 
Let your directors be directors. Let your managers be managers. And let your leaders be leaders. And always be there to help develop the culture in your office. But all of this happens with a plan. You can't just do this accidentally. You've got to develop this strategy for hierarchy. So again, whether it's on paper or in a digital chart, develop who's in charge of what and then start placing people in those chairs. And you've got to figure out what are they good at and how do they belong there. But train them properly after creating the, the right hi hierarchy and you'll be fine. Because after all, I think all of us, unless you're built <laughs> very differently than the rest of us, most of us would like to show up to work, have a great time in the morning meeting, cheer everybody up for the day, have a great time with our patients, do amazing ortho, and draw the line there. Maybe do some social media posts, right? But have somebody else be in charge of marketing, have somebody be in charge of looking at all the numbers, have somebody in charge of making sure clinical systems are being run effectively. Because I hope, I hope if you have a mature office, you're not doing the ordering of the supplies. I hope you're not paying all your bills yourself if you've got a real going office. If your office is doing more than a million dollars a year in production, why are you paying the bills? Your time is way more valuable than sitting there paying bills. Now, that doesn't give you an excuse not to be responsible for the numbers of the office. That means you have to put systems in place and hiring people who are going to help you put systems in place to make sure you don't get embezzled from. But aside from that, you should be doing as little as you possibly can other than doing ortho and being a great founder of your practice. So again, what's your homework? Go put together a chart of who's doing what and what they should be doing when you start growing and develop the metrics or the KPIs of when that's gonna happen. So that way, you can start looking for the right person now, way in advance of needing it, and take your time. But when they're ready, you do the chairs, you move people around where they belong, and you will have a lot less stress in your life and a lot more free time to actually be more productive and do the things you enjoy. Hope you're coming to Summit, opsummit2022.com. If you're not coming, you're gonna miss the best show and party of the year. Go sign up now and know that I'm always here for you if you need anything, all right? Reach out to me, because I'd love to help you any way I can. My job is to help you lead the most profitable, low-stress life you can. Love you all, wishing you a great day, and take care.